World of Warcraft is often regarded as one of the titans of the MMO genre, still going strong after nearly 20 years of adventure, magic, and wonder. As much as Azeroth has claimed its place within the history of fantasy, there is one factor that sets it apart from other mainstream franchises like the Lord of the Rings. It's technology. Even back during the time of Classic WoW or Wrath of the Lich King, players can witness a number of ingenious creations developed by the gnomes, goblins, and others. These marvels often stand out as more steampunk or industrial than most of the other things in the game. And while some may not be fans of this style, I personally think it makes WoW all the more unique in how it chooses to portray technological progress. But there are two big questions I still wanted to investigate. How exactly can these gadgets be explained in-game? And what are the real-life similarities between WoW's tech and our own? There are some large plot holes in the scientific part of WoW, and after doing a lot of research, I've uncovered a bunch of details about how this all actually works. As always, thank you all for your fun comments and support, and with all that being said, let's get right into it. Some of the technology is much more straightforward to explain than others. Let's begin by quickly discussing the goblins, and the majority of Horde technology. These guys have an interesting mix of really good ideas and absolutely disastrous environmental policies. Most goblin technology, such as their intimidating shredders and weaponry, seem to be oil-powered. You can find a few oil rigs set up at various places across the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor, usually extracting from a nearby tar pit or underground deposit. The Venture Company, a profiteering coalition of goblins and others, takes this concept to the next level in Wrath of the Lich King, on the Isle of Conquest. Here, a massive oil refinery dominates the western side of the island, and was undoubtedly one of the greatest resources of the cartel before the Horden Alliance chose this spot to start a war. While there does seem to be some natural element to the tar deposits here, it is obvious that the oil byproducts heading into the nearby reefs is not all that great. There is a redeeming side to the goblins, however, and that is their use of zeppelins to fly horde supplies and troops from one place to another. For the right price, of course. These balloons fall under the category of lighter-than-air transports which means they don't have to use expensive engines or propellers to keep themselves afloat. Instead, it seems the goblin engineers have been able to collect some sort of lighter-than-air gas to fill the zeppelins. To draw a real-world comparison, this could be highly flammable hydrogen, the same gas used in the Hindenburg airship disaster. While these balloons can be pretty explosive, in most cases, they're an efficient way to travel through the sky. The gnomes of Azeroth approach technology from a whole different angle. Throughout the lore, gnomes are known for using steam to make their mechanical creations and transports function. From the Deep Run Tram to the gnomish district of Tinkertown, it's obvious that steam power is used here. Behind the High Tinker himself, you can see this giant sphere with all sorts of tubes coming out of it. While it's never explicitly used or explained in the game, I think this contraption is a large boiler or furnace that is used to power this district using steam. Though I wasn't able to find a similar device inside Nomragon, I'm almost certain it would be powered in a similar way. It is important to point out that gnomes also collect oil, and the fizz crank geyser fields in the Borean tundra showcase their willingness, or perhaps need, to gather this resource. Like with many of the first steam-powered creations in real life, most of the gnomish steam technology finds its energy in coal, which is mined throughout the human and dwarven lands. Alliance steamships, or icebreakers as they're called, also apparently utilize steam power, and bear a strong resemblance 
to the paddle wheel boats of the 1800s. This is all well and good, but the whole theory of Alliance steam power starts to fall apart when we change up the scale of the project. Sure, a tram, a boat, and maybe even a large steam tank can hold its own boiler or furnace to keep itself running, but something small like a flying machine, mech, or robot are going to run into difficulties. The same can be said for the really, really big projects, mainly the gunships that were unveiled with the launch of Wrath of the Lich King. These are some of my absolute favorite vehicles in the game, and while there is evidence that steam is powering most of the cool bells and whistles on this boat, somehow in this fantasy game, it's hard for me to believe it is the only thing keeping it afloat. We're going to need something else, something to give our gnomish engineering a little kick. Fortunately, hidden away in the RPG lore of the game, which, bear with me for a minute, we're going to consider canon, lies our solution. It's now time to pay a visit to Johann Becker, a secluded alchemist living in the wilds of Winter Spring. Just kidding. This isn't Johann Becker. This is Johann Becker. He was a real chemist who lived in the 1600s. His main contribution to science? A theory that attempted to explain why things burn or combust. Becker proposed that fire was actually the release of a hypothetical element called phlogiston, a component of substances that was released into the air when they burned and could coalesce back on Earth when it was absorbed by plants. While this theory ended up being scrapped several decades later, it was pretty novel for its time and even hinted at a plant's ability to absorb carbon dioxide from the air years before photosynthesis was really discovered. Pretty cool, but now let's get back to WoW. It turns out the gnomes solved most of their technological problems by discovering and harnessing an actual version of this element phlogiston. The Wowpedia page explains how it works really well, and you can see how it fixes most of the issues with scale and heat that I was discussing earlier. Phlogiston is a gas collected from the air and distilled into vials of liquid phlogiston. Liquid phlogiston contains a precise mixture of oil, water, and phlogiston gas. Liquid phlogiston allows smaller boilers to burn at tremendous temperatures and pressures that enable portable tinker technology and gigantic vehicles to operate. Sounds like just the thing we need to make a tiny gadget work or a massive gunship fly, right? Well, the only problem is that technically, phlogiston as we know it doesn't exist inside the world of classic WoW. For a reason that I'll explore in a minute, the dwarves and gnomes don't seem to acknowledge phlogiston as the main catalyst for all this technology. However, there is still one place you can acquire an actual vial of phlogiston, Razor Fen Crawl. Within this quillbore stronghold, one can come across Rugug, one of the chief shaman of the tribe. Warriors can enter the crawl and loot this boss for a single sample of phlogiston, which is needed to make fire-hardened armor, serving a similar purpose to the other fire-related versions of the element. But why, of all individuals, does this quill bore have access to seemingly the last sample of phlogiston on Azeroth? And why are the gnomes and dwarves completely forgetting about this? The final piece of the puzzle is about to click, and we have somebody to thank for tipping me off to this realization. Elements, engineering, shaman, they're all related, and I'd like to give a quick shout out to Siga Naga for giving me part of this idea in a previous comment. In Classic WoW, engineers can build some pretty crazy things, from explosive weapons, to handy gadgets, to cosmetic pets. Looking through the various crafting recipes, you can't find any more vials of phlogiston, but there is something even more revealing. Elemental Fire. This item, along with its sister items, the Heart of Fire and the Essence of Fire, 
are important crafting reagents for engineers, especially as they pertain to weapons and fire-related items. Could it be that this elemental fire fills the role of phlogiston, powering all sorts of gnomish inventions and weaponry? Despite a few minor inconsistencies in the descriptions, I think so. Returning to Razorfen Crawl, it makes perfect sense that Rugug, a disciple of the elements, was able to experiment with these essences to create a vial of pure phlogiston, a form of this elemental fire strong enough to imbue armor with tremendous power. Still not convinced? The final piece of evidence can again be traced back to a profession. Experienced alchemists are able to transmute an essence of air to an essence of fire, which poetically, perfectly, calls back to Johann Becker's idea of an element that would burn bright into the sky, only to be drawn from it once more. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, may the Force be with you.